We were really scared because we thought the robot was lost. And uh, in addition, the, the captain calls me, say, Osama, we have to leave. There is a storm coming and we don't have any more time. I'm Usama Katib, a professor of computer science at Stanford University. I came to Stanford actually many years ago to do a postdoc. So after finishing my PhD, I went to Stanford to spend one year. I'm still there. I did my PhD in Toulouse at Supero, and I also uh, did my undergrad in Montpellier. There are several things to talk about with respect to the robotics lab and uh, the effort in robotics at Stanford. For many years, I've been leading the robotics laboratory, uh, which was focusing on getting human and machine to be connected through interfaces. And those interfaces involve visual uh, feedback and also tactile feedback through what we call haptic devices. Currently, I'm launching a new effort to, to connect uh, our work in my lab with other efforts at Stanford in robotics through the Stanford Robotic Center called SRC. And this is almost uh, a unique model of creating space for real world challenges in robotics. So we are going to have an aquarium there. We're going to have uh, medical robotics. We're going to have field robotics. We're going to have art and social interaction with human robots in a social context. We're going to have different projects that are not possible to do in, in a laboratory setting. However, my laboratory itself is uh, focusing, as I said, on manipulation, on developing uh, architecture of control, on dealing with motion planning of robots, uh, how we can move without hitting obstacles, avoiding collision, but at the same time, how we coordinate uh, our uh, motion with the robot, how robots communicate with humans, uh, a lot of fun things. Well, you can ask me what links I have with the U.S. because I have all the links with France. I studied in France. I had my family in France. My son was born in Montpellier. And, and uh, uh, my colleagues are all over uh, in France. Uh, in fact, uh, professionally, uh, we have a lot of connections with, in, in my work with different France, uh, French laboratories in Montpellier, in Paris, in uh, uh, many other locations in Toulouse. I did my work in robotics in Toulouse, so I have many connections with CNRS, with LAS in uh, Toulouse, uh, in uh, Paris, the same uh, ma major laboratory there was a place where I, I sometimes spend time uh, lecturing there and working during my sabbatical uh, time. But the major effort right now that we have is in Montpellier. In Montpellier, we are uh, pursuing a collaboration uh, in medical field. I'm hosting right now a professor from Montpellier, from the University of Montpellier. And also, uh, I have uh, a collaboration that lasted through the whole project of Ocean One, where Mon Gardien, a robot, uh, came from Montpellier. So uh, Ocean One is always going in the water with another robot, an ROV, and that ROV was designed in Montpellier, and we have uh, uh, a huge collaboration between our labs uh, in the deployment of the robot uh, in, in many of the different uh, locations in France. Ocean One K is I think today is the only robot in the world that is capable of really doing dexterous manipulation underwater. So we have a lot of robots that can go to very deep in, this, in the oceans and they, they basically are going to be able to see, uh, explore, but not intervene physically by interacting with the physical environment by doing intervention. Intervention requires hands and arms. Deploying robots with hands and arms is very, very difficult. It is done in, in the context of uh, industrial applications uh, with very uh, stiff and heavy robots. Uh, however, there are no robots that are soft, compliant, capable of, of touching objects without breaking them and uh, uh, having the capabilities of uh, also uh, being able to 
coordinate two arms and two hands together. But not only that, being able to connect that information back to the surface so human can feel it. So haptic interaction with Ocean One going down to the depth of a thousand meters is very difficult and the only robot that can do that is Ocean One. When you take robots to the field, you have always a lot of uh, surprises and a lot of uh, uh, difficulties uh, making sure that everything is working as you, you wish. And two missions that we had, uh, the robot uh, was in a almost peril situation. The first one was uh, with Ocean One, the original robot. Uh, when we went to uh, La Lune, uh, there are two cannons standing uh, still uh, on the surface, on the seabed, and uh, there was a, a vase where uh, the robot was rotating to reach that vase, and uh, it was nighttime, and suddenly the robot got caught between the two cannons because of a current that came and pushed the robot, and the robot was completely stuck there. So we tried to extract the robot by operating the, the thrusters to move back, and the robot was stuck more and more. And we were really scared because we thought the robot was, was lost. And uh, in addition, the, the captain calls me to say, uh, Usama, we have to leave. There is a storm coming and we don't have any more time. We have to, to get out of here which meant that we would like just leave the robot uh, in, in that uh, uh, situation. Well, um, fortunately, uh, we have the haptics and we have the ability to use the arms. And using the arms haptically, we were able to push against those uh, cannon and extract the robot from that situation within about five minutes, the time that the captain allowed me to uh, operate before leaving the robot in the water. So that was quite, quite scary, but it shows how important it is to have the human always uh, in the help of robots. As much as we need robots, robots need us as well.